I title this the million dollar dance. The dance that took a little nobody girl and placed her up there, gave her a potential to be the owner and the ruler of half of a great kingdom. You know, one of the greatest blessings, and I, I like to say this over and over to remind myself that God gave me, it's when I turned the Bible one day and the scripture, the Bible says all of the scripture were given for our examples. It changed the way I read the Bible. I began to look into the book for what example. If I opened the book and a woman, Hannah, waiting for a child, being taunted by Penina over and over, but finally, subsequently, eventually, and at last, she had the last laugh. She said, God has enlarged my mouth against my enemies. When I look at that, I see beyond her because God must have told the story for a reason. And that reason is to give me the example. So I learned from that that what God did for her, he can do for me. So I, I, I stopped just reading Bible stories. I began to get messages from what happened to other people. He said, all of this scripture is for our example. Paul preached about it says, all scripture is profitable. It don't matter if it's lineology and it says this person gave birth to this person. Gave birth. It's all written and it's all profitable. So I want to to join me, let's look beyond the text and the context and the pretext of this scripture. Let's go beyond the exegesis. Let's look at the typological and the prophetic message that God has in here for us. Because God has something he wants to say. Let me give you a little background quickly. This is the story of King Herod Antipas ruler of Galilee and a part of the Herod the Great dynasty. Herod Antipas had a brother. His name is Herod Philip the first. And even though Herod Philip was a part of the Herod the Great oligarchy, he was not in government. He was just a businessman, a private man. The Bible says he married a woman called Herodias. She's a very important part of our story. Herodias, the daughter of Aristobulus, who himself was a grand uh, 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 um, son of Herod the Great. So she came from the royal family too. But the Bible says that while she was married to Philip, brother of the king, she began to relate with the king. And even though she came from a rich family, had a rich husband, she was seduced by the glory of power and position. The prospect of being the first lady. The prospect of being a queen with a kingdom. So the Bible says she left her husband and went and began to live with the brother, King Antipas. Herod Antipas. Well, everybody couldn't say nothing about it because this is not a precedent. It's a king. You don't go against the king. So everyone got, got quiet except one guy. His name is John the Baptist. He's a ragged preacher who has the boldness to challenge the decisions and the action of the king. He preached so hard that Herod the king Antipas wondered who is this person in my kingdom that has the courage to speak against what I've done. So he took what you might call a covert mission. He went undercover, sneaked into John the Baptist meeting and had him preach. And when he left there, he was filled with fear for the God and the authority that that man commanded. Because of that, and when he found out, his wife 
wanted to kill John the Baptist for coming against her relationship. She took him and put him in prison. Not to hurt him, but to make sure she puts him in a place the wife can't get to because of all the guards and everything. In other words, she put him in protective custody. So when the Bible says that when a convenient day was come, what convenient day? A day convenient for Herodias to get her revenge. A day convenient for her to kill John the Baptist, which is what she's been trying to do for a long time. And this day that became a convenient day for her was meant to be a great day for the king, Herod Antipas. He had his birthday. The Bible says he invited important guests, the lords, the high captains, the chief estates of Galilee, men of high position, men of power, men of pedigree. All the who is he and who is who in the nations were gathered together in his party. And just as it is with every party, they turn on the music and people began to dance. And then Herodias, little daughter, young Herodias, hit the dancing floor like everybody else. But as she danced, and I don't know what kind of dance she danced, but the dance got into the head of the king. He got so excited and gave her a blank check. Stood up and said, my God, I love what you have done. Sweetheart, I'm going to do something. Ask me for whatever you want. I'm going to give you. You know the story? She went to mama. Mommy, what should I ask? Mom said, go tell the king to give you the head of John the Baptist. And that's what we suffer when we don't have a mind of our own. People influence you when to come, when not to come, how to give, how not to give. When you are somebody, I mean, we should all take advice. But you should be a suggestion box, not an instruction box. Everybody on the planet who cannot take responsibility, responsibility for their own actions and make up their own mind, they never go far in life. Mama should have said, Mom, if you want John the Baptist, head, that's not what I want. But she came back and asked for John the Baptist's head. And I was saying here in the first service, I don't understand that. Why would somebody have the potential of having a kingdom and they ask for somebody's head? And even if you want John the Baptist's head, why don't you just ask for the for the half of the kingdom where John the Baptist prison is. Then you can have his head, his leg, his tail, everything because he's in your jurisdiction. You understand my point? But it didn't cross her mind because when you allow bitterness and hatred to overwhelm you, you don't think well. It affects your wisdom. And let me say it straight. There's a kingdom prepared for you. But you'll miss it if you allow unforgiveness and hatred to run your life. You know, when I forgive people, I don't do it for them. I do it for me. I was teaching a few months ago somewhere. And the Lord just kept me. Uh, both of you, please come. Is that already quickly? I'm going to wrap this thing up. Let's imagine that I and this woman say imagine. Let's imagine we're married. Say imagine. Because I don't trust some of you. <laughs> You're all witnesses. I said imagine. All right. Now let's imagine that he is Jesus. Before she met me, she became connected with Jesus. Before I met her, I became connected with Jesus. Then one day we met, I became connected. The Bible says a threefold cord cannot be broken. 
Watch my point. There's somebody else involving your marriage than both of you. The one who brought you together. I don't always like what my wife says and the way she says it. And there are times I want to. Then I remember this other guy. So I'm going to love her not because she deserves it, but because he says I should love her. I'm going to forgive you, not because of you. You are not worth all the trouble. But here is something you should think about. I am not going to let you to affect my relationship with the one who makes me break through. Are you with me? But let's take for a minute, let's imagine for a minute that this woman asks for the right thing. This girl, she asks for half of the kingdom. Can you picture where she would be right now? That means the king will rule one half. She will rule the other half. That means the king will not be her boss. He'll be her cohort. She'll be equal to the king. As rich as the king. As important as the king. As powerful as the king. And if somebody who was not there showed up in town and said, Where's sister so so so? Say, so, oh, she's queen of the other half. How did it happen? Oh, someone will say, well, she danced in a party and that's it. My question is, if dancing can bring such a blessing on a little girl, why is everybody in the kingdom not dancing? Well, they were dancing. Because she wasn't the only one on the dancing floor. When there's music, people dance. And on that day, she wasn't the only one dancing. But while others were dancing, she was dancing in her dancing. You're then hearing me now. Like I said, I don't know what steps she took and, and how she did it. But the Bible qualifies her own dance. Everybody danced, but she danced. The Bible says, it was only her dance that pleased the king. I don't know that she put in more effort. I don't know whether she, she, she lifted it to the next level. I don't know if it's a passion or she did her best. But I know something. The king got so pleased, so happy that he lost control of himself. And he said, I swear. Because I'm feeling so happy right now. It's the best birthday I've got. My God, I didn't know you could dance like this, baby. Wow. Mama, 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 mama. He said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to surprise you all, but I'm going to do this. I swear, in front of all of these kings and important people, the next thing you ask me is yours. And just to show you how serious I am, if you ask for half of my kingdom, I'll give it to you. Now here is my point. If an earthly king who is so pleased can go that far of giving someone half of his kingdom, what will happen when you and I please the king of kings? What will happen when you and I please the king of kings? If an earthly king can have that kind of generosity to say whatever you want I'm going to give it to you don't you think that God is able to do more than that Luke chapter 12 verse 32 says it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom one of my favorite scriptures first John chapter 3 verse 22 it says whatsoever we have first John 3 22 and whatsoever we ask, somebody say whatsoever, we receive of him. Wow. Archbishop, for many people in the church, prayer is plenty of effort. Hoping, it's a gamble. Hoping that after all that all night, some of what I said, God will answer. But look at the scripture that says, whatever we ask of him, 
we receive. Now let me ask you a question. What, what is inclusive in the word what, whatever? Is a husband part of whatever? Is a wife? Is healing and health? What about change of character of that your husband? Is it part of the whatsoever? Come on, don't shout me down. I'm preaching real good. You know what I'm talking about. What about money to pay your fees and your rent? Is that part of the whatsoever? What about God bringing peace in your family? Is that part of the whatsoever? What about your visa, your scholarship? What about passing your exams? What about fulfilling your dream? There is not one problem you... Oh, Look, friends, earth has no problem that heaven cannot solve. God says, I dare you, come to me with whatsoever. If you ask it, I got it. But the question is, why is he going to do that? Give whatever we ask of him? He said, because. Look at that scripture. Because. Because of what? Because we keep Come on, preach with me. We keep his commandments and do what? And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Not what is convenient for us to do, but those things which are pleasing. When we are willing to do the things that will please him, he would give us a blank check. Friends, there's no telling what a king can do when somebody pleases him. There's no telling what Jehovah can do when someone pleases him. There's no telling what the king of kings can do when somebody makes him happy. I'm reminded about a man called Solomon in the Bible, a king who everybody was giving offerings and he stepped out and gave a thousand sacrifices. The Bible says only he did that. That night he was trying to sleep when God came in and disturbed his sleep. Solomon! Solomon! He said, Lord, is that you? He said, yes, it's me. Uh, whatever it is, can we talk about it tomorrow? I'd like to sleep. God said, I'm sorry. I can't let you sleep because I'm bubbling right now. There's something stayed up in me and it's not my fault it's your fault you did something that i'm so happy about and we must talk about your blessing tonight because i can't wait <laughs> hey hey could it be that today in this service you can do something this is what i call prayer made easy many times in the church we pray harder because we are not doing what he wants us to do. Don't get me wrong. It's good to pray. It's good to travel. But sometimes we try to cover up our disobedience with our prayer. If there's a prayer meeting and you are close to someone and they pray, oh, da, 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 then they suddenly keep quiet. Hmm. They are not in the spirit. Don't think they enter the spirit. They remembered what they did with that guy last night. Hmm. Then the prayer goes from Baba to Uraba, Sira Baba. Father, oh Father, oh Father. Friends, righteousness exalts. But sin is a reproach to a people. When you live right, you don't do it to impress God. You do it to help yourself. When I was growing up, there's something that all, I was the last born. And my brothers and sisters, when they need something real urgent, something serious, they always call me. You know what I'm talking about? Go tell dad that we need stuff. Why me? Because when you are that small, you are innocent. They are thinking, of course, Dad, uh, we want stuff. You want stuff. Did you wash the car I asked you to wash? What about the stuff I asked you to do? Because when you have not done what you are supposed to do, 
you lose the courage to ask for what is yours. A fugitive has no constitutional rights. You can trample on their rights. Are they going to take you to the police? Yeah, the police is looking for them. The Bible says, when your righteousness is complete, then you can punish all disobedience. I'm sorry to say, church, time has come for us to exchange noise with real prayer. The Bible said that those who speak in tongues of men and angels and so on, he said, but that prayer is noise. There's something all night, and God said, what's, what's that all night noise? Where you have the love of God in your heart, the love for God in your heart. Few words, more result. That's where you're getting to. I said, that's where you're getting to. I said, that's where you're getting to. Solomon, I'm happy about your offerings. And I came to give you a blank check. Ask me for whatever you want. Solomon, nice guy, said, you know, Lord, all I need is wisdom to be able to do what you ask me to do and to take care of your people and so on. God said, wow, I like you. You're not thinking about killing your enemies and stuff like that and riches. He said, but please, I'm going to give you the wisdom you want. I know you didn't ask for money, but I must give you money. I must give you by force. Because to be very wise and have no money is an issue. I must give you. Listen to me. You are entering into a realm in your life, a season, where God will not only give you what you ask for, he will give you even what you don't ask for. This is your season of an overflow. Lift up your hand and shout a big hallelujah. I was telling them the first service, when I came into this country, I heard words which are not different from what I hear at home. In fact, I hear it in America. Everybody complained about the economy. Oh, this in Ghana are expensive. Blah, 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 blah. I looked at my sister who was talking to me over and over and I said, how come Ghana determines your hope and your faith? I told her I said, the Bible didn't say that our country determines our destiny. It says we determine the destiny of our nation. So how can you allow the difficulty of the present time to influence your confidence in God? My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I do not trust the sweetest frame but I only lean on Jesus name <laughs> on Christ the solid rock I stand all on the ground he's sinking sand all on the ground he's sinking sand friend Philippians 4, 19 says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory, not according to the economy in Ghana. We still serve a God who brings water out of the rock and who sends a raven to feed one of his own. Friends, if you don't understand your identity, you can never break through on this planet. When we pray, God will change the situation in Ghana. But there's some darkness that God wants. Because it separates between his own and the other. He said, gross darkness shall fill the earth. But the glory of God shall arise upon you. When things are difficult and you are prospering, then the sinner wants to find out how are you making it. You now say, Jesus... That's when they want to come to church. You know, God knows how to shake this planet and make people... I mean, nine out of ten of you who, who are here, you came to Jesus because things got rough. You had nowhere else to go. Hello? So sometimes in a nation, 
When people have so much pleasure, everything is going on well, they forget their God. Even church people say, oh, Pastor, I don't have time. I'm really busy. This, there's no the business is going on. I've got to go to Japan. I've got to go. I don't have time, you know. But I'll come for a few services. But when God, who knows how to shake you up, out of your comfort zone, he'll just put some trouble, 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 trouble. Depth, depth, depth. Issues all over your head. Then you now start to say, I, I, I used to have a God. <laughs> I remember when I went to action, I had nothing. When the man of God prayed for me, my business broke through. I'm going back to my action. I'm going back to my God. I'm going back to my prayer. I'm going back to my titan. I'm go oh, you all are hearing me now. Hey! But the point is that you must never allow or ever think that because things are difficult in your country, it must be difficult with you. You don't know who you are. You've got to know your identity. Listen to me. In Egypt, there's a corner called Goshen. Same country, but things are different there. Even the way they are pregnant give birth is different. I was telling them in the earlier service, don't make the mistake. Not all Ghanaians are simply Ghanaians. Not all people are simply people. There are some people who are peculiar people. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you had not obtained mercy, but now you've obtained mercy. Once you were not a people, but you have become the people of God. I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob cannot be consumed. You are not like the others because he lives, you can face tomorrow when they can't. You can face it. You can face it. A song says, he will handle anything that comes my way. All he got to do is come my way. If he goes somebody else's way, they're in trouble. If he comes my way, he'll handle it. So, bring it on. Bring it on. Satan, do your worst. Ghana, Increase prices if you want. I'm praying. I'm praying hard for a change. Not for me. But for those guys. Because I operate under a different economy. My God supplies all my needs. I'm going to his riches in glory. He says, bring your tithes and offerings. I will pour out. A blessing. He says, I will try to pour if your economy is good. The Bible says, I will show you the hidden riches of nations. Friends, as we speak right now, things are difficult many places, but they are poor who are still making mega money. Why not you? Why not a child of God? They are riches, but people can't see it. But for you, God will show you the hidden. So you don't need to walk around saying things are difficult, things are so bad. You are a part of the exclusive class. He said, excuse me, Balak, I know you want me to curse them, but this them you asked me to curse, they are a different brand. They are not curseable. He said, curse them. He said, there is no enchantment against Jacob. No divination against Israel. He said, no weapon sharpened against you will prosper. Which means if they are shopping against somebody else, they are finished. He said, there's a roaring lion going to and fro seeking for whom to devour. He's going to seek for whom to devour because not everybody is edible. When you've got Jesus, you've got light. And the last time I checked, darkness has never overwhelmed light. <laughs> Speaking out of the mouth of Jesus himself. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the evil one. And nothing, nothing shall by any means 
hurt you. They might be hurtful, but they can't hurt you. You are not the one to be trodden on by circumstances as you tread upon it. Yeah, the devil's got power, witches have power, but I give you power over the power. <laughs> That's the advantage you have. He said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them who believe in me in my name. They will cast out devils. He said they would drink deadly things. It's deadly because it makes people die. But not them. The picture Jesus paints of a child of God, Superman. Exclusive. When they say things are going to be bad in Ghana, you say, not for me. For sinners only. <laughs> Ebola, be careful. Everyone is going to die. Oh yeah, take precautions, but don't let fear enter your heart. Because there were many plagues you know, I, I, I was, I'm going to take this video back to my church. Because I just left my church and I said exactly what you said here. It's not a disease. It's a plague. Plagues are not, don't always come from the devil. When God stamps a sickness and says, go there and torment them. He's doing it like he did in Egypt. So that those who cry and get the blood mark. <laughs> they become the delivered. Do you know many Egyptians ran into the houses of Israelites? Because as long as there was blood in the... Oh, you all, you all are hearing me now. <laughs> they tried to cure it. HIV. It's a plague. When God says stop, stop, stop. They don't listen. For a season, he releases them. Until our stubbornness is broken. Gives us a break, come back again. The reason why I know Ebola is not going to kill you, because there was a time we had SARS. Bird flu. The names are plenty. Something fever. They come one after the other. It's not for you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Can somebody say hallelujah? This message, what God is saying, is that if you want kingdom blessing in abundance, forget about what's happening around you. Forget about what people are doing or doing to you. Forget about government. Just please me. I created you Revelation 4.11, for my pleasure where you created. Just give me pleasure. Please me, and I'll give you a financial kingdom. Please me, and I'll provide your needs. Please me, and I'll help you pay the rent. Please me, and I'll give you the visa you've been trying to get. Please me, and I'll give you the scholarship. Just make me happy, and I'm going to make you happy by giving you a husband, giving you pregnancy, giving you healing, giving you promotion. I have a kingdom for those who can make me happy. I know you would really like for me to say, just say amen seven times and the, it will come to pass. But friend, we can have problem with our relationship with him and then I'll ask him to do us good. I don't know if you women would like a guy who is not there for you, never does anything, never stands with you, never talks to you, he only shows up when he wants sex. Oh, I get the answer from your faces. That's a user. He don't care about you. But sweetheart, before you get <laughs> excited, temperamental, that's exactly what you're doing to God. You're treating God like a whore. 
when you need something. Oh God, pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Why are you afraid it's going to pass you? Because you've never been there. Look at your face. Come out from among them and be ye separated and touch not the unclean thing and I will be your God and then you will know what it means to be my people. The same way Satan stole the garden of Eden from Adam and Eve by making them disobedient. That's the way he's stealing many people's kingdom. It's taken away. Oh, God told you to do this, but don't do it. You can't do it now. Reduce your tithes. Reduce your giving. Things are difficult. Reduce your church attendance. But when you obey him, you prevail. Things go well when you're on God's side. They say, one man with God is a majority. Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? But what if God is not for you? In a world, Archbishop, where there's enough satanic divination against you. I was preaching somewhere. I began to talk about forces of darkness and of opposition. After the service, a lady walks up to me and says, uh, thank you for your preaching, but I just don't think it applies to me. I said, oh, why? He said, I, I don't have any enemies. I, I, don't, I don't do nothing to no one. I just live my life in peace. You know, I said, yeah, you're right, sweetheart. You don't have any enemies, but enemies have you. Because in this world, you don't have to offend anybody. They're already offended just because you are prospering. Just because you are smiling. Haven't you seen people jealous of you and the guys who are jealous are far better than you? And you look and say, what do I have? Why, why are they jealous of me in this office? You, you got nothing. You know the truth? You don't even know you. But when they see you, they can tell that greatness is about to happen. If you don't believe me, ask a king by the name of Pharaoh or Herod, as big as he is. He's looking for a little child called Moses to kill. He's threatened by a little baby. Kills all the children in the land just to get to Moses. Why? For the same reason that Moses' mama put him in a basket. He said, I perceive this is a proper child. He's a little baby now. I miss not much, but I see greatness in him. The devil knows where you are going, many of you, more than you do. When Jesus was born, Jesus was the only guy who had no age mates. Because from two years down, they killed everybody. <laughs> Why would any king as big and powerful as that be fighting little children who can't even speak their name? He can see what they're about to become. So do you know why all of this opposition is in your life? We used to say in Nigeria, children don't throw stones on mangoes that are not ripe. If there's a mango tree hanging out of your house, there's some children throw stones to pick one. They don't throw stones if the mango is not ripe. But when it's ripe, so when people backbite you, it's a sign that they're in your back. They know what you're going to become. They can see your glory. You ought to be saying, future, wait for me. I'm coming in style. You can't give up on yourself. You can't give up on your business. You can't give up on your family. You can't give up on your health. Friends, you've come too far to turn around. Everybody knows you with Jesus. You can't backslide now you can't throw down your faith i came to tell you today it is not over until it's over i came to tell you ah that the stone which builders rejected it can become the head of the corner i came to tell you that this mountain can become a plain ah, 
came to tell you that this dry bones, dry bones in your marriage, dry bones in your relationship, dry bones in your spiritual life, dry bones in your business, these dry bones, they are coming together. What is in the valley? It's about to be upon the mountain. Say dry bones. I can't hear you. Say dry bones. Call my life today. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. I just came back a number of weeks ago from Port Harcourt, a city in our country. Just like this, I didn't come, I didn't go there to preach. I went to see my brother. Son of mine had us in town, came to see me. Would you be with us in church on Sunday? I said, no. I'm on holiday. I came to see my brother. I didn't come to preach. If you want me to preach, invite me. Only Duncan Williams can make me preach anytime he wants. I know my boss. If you're under me, you can't just get them. So he now said, Daddy, Sunday is actually my birthday. If you can't come in the morning, come in the evening, we have a little fellowship party. Just come and bless me and leave. So I said, okay, I'll do that. So I went. When I entered the place, I didn't even bring a Bible. Just to bless him and go. The power of God came upon me. And when they called me forward to pray for him, I had myself say, no weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No enchantment. No definition. I preached myself happy for, for some 15, 20 minutes. And I told them that the word of God said, Who is he that said the thing and it cometh to pass? When God did not say it, let every man be a liar. Let every devil be a liar. If God says it, I believe it. And that settles it for me. Why would God put such a scripture? Because he knows that people will say negative things over your life. But you have to say, I believe the report of the Lord. I preached myself happy. Later on, I had the story of a girl who had been hearing about me for many years while she was in school. Now she's a new member of the church. And she said, that man is coming. Oh my God, Fredado. Oh, God is so good to me. I must be there. But on the Saturday, before the Sunday, which I was going to show up. She came out from her apartment, you know. She was in this place where there are many apartments together. She came out. She had these little slippers which she wears to do some chores around the compound. Sometimes she takes it to the market and back. She came out. Look, normally the slippers outside the house. So she looked for the slippers. It wasn't there. So she spoke around the whole compound. Hey, who took my slippers? Why would anybody be interested in an old slippers like that? She asked everybody, everybody said, no, I didn't take it, I didn't take it. Well, she wore another one, went to the salon, made her hair, went to the market, bought some stuff, went to a friend, and then she came back in the evening and her slippers was right where she left it. She said, who would be stealing or borrowing a slippers like this and cannot see it? It's not even pretty. Then she thought, maybe they took it and wore it and they got caught, so they went to fix it. So she tried it with one leg to make sure whether... It's working. Leg here, leg there. Oh, it's all right. So she went in. Sunday morning, the sister knocked on the door. Auntie, I thought you were excited about Fredardo's coming. Why are you still sleeping? He had answered. Mm, mm. She opened the door. And when she got in there, Auntie, are you okay? He said, I can't stand. I feel pain around my waist. Took off the cover cloth and one of her legs, the leg she used to put in her slippers. Elephantiasis. That's what they thought, but I, I told her it is satanatitis, demonatitis, witchiditis. Her leg was swollen. I said, what happened? She said, I don't know. He said, I've got to take it to the hospital. He said, no, 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 no. If you take me there, they'll probably admit me. The devil is trying to make me miss Fredardo's conference. I must go. He said, but mommy, until you're in pain. He said, you guys carry me. Put me in a transport. Let's go. I take my pain to church. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is that not what the preachers preach? 
There's answer in the church. That's why I need to go there. So they brought her to the service and she had me preach. Then while I was preaching, the Holy Spirit said, tell the people to come back on Monday. I'm going to lay hands on them. I said, Lord, but I wanted to leave on Monday. He said, no, do it. So I announced to them. So she went back saying, no weapon. No weapon. She was planning to be there the next day. When she woke up Monday morning, the leg had doubled. I was planning for, for the evening of that Monday when I got news about a very precious son of mine, member of our church, who passed on. He was so close to me for 17 years at Bishop. Nobody touched my hair, but he's a business guy, but he knows how to bat. He would travel and meet me in one city somewhere with my clippers just to bat my hair. He was the only guy who laid hands on my head apart from Duncan Williams. <laughs> you are so lucky to have such a man. <laughs> and then I heard he was dead. I was so broken. I said, Lord, why didn't you tell me about this? He said, all you need to know is that he's with me. And to depart from the flesh is far better. Well, he gave me a whole lot of teaching. And I said, Lord, what do I do? I know the family and the church will be in so much pain now. Do I go there or should I stay here and do the meeting I promised? Uh, God said, go, go comfort them. They need you right now. I said, but Lord, I promised those guys I'll be there Sunday night. He said, that's my problem with you. I've told you over and over that things great don't happen because you are present. It happens because I am present. I said, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. But what do I do? He said, what did the scripture say? The scripture says, he sent his word. He said, if my word is there, I don't confirm no prophets. I don't confirm no bishops. I confirm my word with signs and wonders following. Then the Lord told me what to do. He said, talk to the pastor. Call from home at the service time. Let them put it in the speakers. Speak the word over to them. It will be as if you were there under the anointing. Then he said, do something else. Tell them to get your handkerchiefs. Pray over the handkerchiefs. Because out of Paul, they took handkerchiefs and aprons. And the Bible says, though Paul was not there, the gift of God upon him went with the handkerchiefs. You read the word of God. One of the things that holds God's power apart from the human body is cloth. The mantle, the handkerchief, whatever, hem of his garment, you know. He said, pray over it. He said, remember, when they took it from Paul, the people were healed and the devils, the Bible says, the evil spirits left. Can you imagine the evil spirit leaving because the handkerchief got there? Talking about anointing made easy. I said, Lord, so I made them get the handkerchiefs. I prayed over it and then I sent it, you know. And then I called, prayed for them, they, they distributed the handkerchiefs. The girl took the handkerchief to put around her big leg. And she was saying, no weapon. But it couldn't go around. So she came to her and said, no weapon. And they carried her, no weapon. Then she woke up Tuesday morning and both legs were big. Now she was crying, but she was saying, no weapon. Oh, no weapon. Oh, no weapon. They said, Auntie, we are taking you to the hospital now. There's no conference. Let's go. I see. So they carried her, brought a taxi. And while they were carried out, she kept on saying, no weapon. No weapon. No divination. No witchcraft. She kept on saying that. She said to me, the best way I can describe what happened was that it was like lightning. She said, looks at it, it was lightning. They had a sound. Pa, 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 pa. As if, and there was no sign of rain. Over, and this lightning came down and hit. So the, the four people carrying her all fell to the ground. She too fell to the ground. When she put her head down, her leg was back to normal. She said, Bishop, that's not the only thing that excites me. She said, Bishop, one thing I never do is wear shorts or anything short. Because when I was growing up, I was more of a tom tomboy. And 
Everything wrong has happened to my leg. Hot oil, <laughs> pressing iron. He said, I have all kinds of marks in my leg. So I always wear long so nobody sees my leg. He said, but when I got healing, I looked for the scars, scars and there was none. <laughs> Listen to me. Naaman would have just been happy to be able to use his hand again. But God gave him the skin and the hand of a brand new child. New beginnings. I say new beginnings. God is giving you a new beginning. God is giving you what you didn't ask for. Lift up your hand and shout hallelujah. But something has happened. Suddenly, a woman, one of the neighbors, ran from where she was. It's me, it's me. And they say, it's you what? Help me, it's me. He said, what? He said, you are looking for your slippers? Yes, I took it to a place and I gave this fetish priest. You are supposed to keep growing fatter and fatter and suffer till you die. Then that guy said, but why did you do that? Did I ever do anything to offend you? He said, no. He said, ah, mommy, every time you are in trouble in this compound, who do you run to? He says, you. Who gives you money when there's no food in the house? You. Who takes care of your children for you? He says, you. So why would you want to kill me? She said, it's not my fault. It's that thing I belong to. If I didn't do that to you, they'll kill me. I had to protect myself. He said, now that I've told you, I'm finished. I can even feel them, you know, hurting me right now. That lady said, say with me, no weapon. She said, no weapon. He said, do you know why you couldn't kill me? He said, he said, I gave my life to Christ. So he made her to kneel down. She knelt down. She gave her life to Christ. He said to her, see after me, no weapon. No weapon. Somebody said, no weapon. Somebody said, no weapon. She called me. She said, Bishop, now they called me pastor in my compound. I told them I'm not a pastor. Listen to me. God is going to surprise you. Those who watch you cry, they will see you laugh. Those who put you down, they will rejoice with you. Lift up your head and shout hallelujah. What is the million dollar dance? Is the dance that pleases the king. It wasn't in the dance. It was the fact that that dance please the king whatever you do make sure you please the king of kings don't just dance dance till you please the king don't just sing sing till you please the king don't just worship worship till you please the king don't just forgive forgive till you please the king don't just give give till you please the king don't just fight fight till you please the king Friends, we may all be in this place together. But each of us will give account of himself. I gave them an analogy in the first service. How everybody in the dancing floor were busy trying to impress their dancing partner. Mm, 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 come on, go. Yes, yes, come on. Yeah, go Freddy. And they were conscious of all those around who were watching their dancing. You know, when you dance so well on the dancing floor, people form a circle. Go, yeah, yeah. So you try to give them what they want. Somebody said, how come that preacher can dance so well? Are you the only one that watches television? <laughs> but while they were dancing for each other, she was dancing to impress the king. You see, if the messenger in an office does not like you, it makes no difference. If the messenger likes you, it makes no difference. It is the boss who can promote you that you should try to impress. Sweetheart, let's get over trying to impress each other. Look at them and say, I love you. 
but I'm not here to impress you. 